all sin. I take refuge in your arms so that you may lead me on the path of virtue and assist me at the hour of my death. Amen. Today's Mass is being offered for Kathy Flynn.
Where brothers unite to glorify God, there the Lord will give blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate sacred. <clears throat> I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. For I ask the Blessed Mary of our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Lord, who enkindled in the heart of the blessed Marie Rose Dorcher the flame of ardent charity and a great desire to cooperate in the mission of the church as a teacher, grant us that same act of love so that in responding to the needs of the world today, we may lead our brothers and sisters to the blessedness of eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, you heard of my former way of life in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it, and progressed in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries among my race. Since I was even more a zealot for my ancestral traditions, but when he, who from my mother's womb had set me apart and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me so that I might proclaim him to the Gentiles. I did not immediately consult flesh and blood, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. Rather, I went to, into Arabia and then returned to Damascus. Then, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to confer with Cephas and remained with him for 15 days. But I did not see any, of the, any other of the apostles, only James, the brother of the Lord. As to what I am writing to you, behold, before God, I am not lying. Then I went into the regions of Syria and Sicilia, and I was unknown personally to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only kept hearing that the one who was, once who was once persecuting us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. So they glorified God because of me. The word of the Lord. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. 
O oh Lord, you have probed me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize. With all my ways you are familiar. Truly you have formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul also you knew full well, nor was my frame unknown to you when I was made in secret, when I was fashioned in the depths of the earth. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat beside the Lord at his feet listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Today on the church calendar, there's two saints, Saint Rose Marie Dorcher, which was, who was a religious sister, who uh, is a saint, um, and she actually lived in, I think she was born in Canada, and she was known for her, for her ardent charity, her love of Almighty God, and she expressed that and how she lived and taking care uh, of, of others and living that out. And also another saint, Saint Bruno. Bruno is is the founder of the Carthusians. The Carthusian order is a it, it's a religious order that they live the men live in community, and but they don't they they live just kind of inside the the convent. They don't really or the monastery. They don't really go out, and they don't really talk either. Um, unless they need to. Uh, but they did that so as to focus more intensely on the love of Christ. And so some are called to that type of life. But we think of the, the saints. You know, yesterday we talked a little bit about the meanings of relics. How do you get declared a, a saint, you know, by the church? You know, the, so when the church declares someone a saint, that we know that they are in heaven. So there's a few steps in, in becoming, declaring a saint. One, you're, they, after you die, you know, if people, you know, write Rome and say, look at his life. He lived or she lived a holy life, a devout life. You know, she, he, he's a, he might be a saint in heaven. So the church looks at that person, you know, and how that person lived. And they declare him, you know, if they think so, they'll, they'll declare him a servant of God. And then after that, they look at all, you know, more intensely his writings or his, you know, his actions that he did. You know, even getting witnesses and stuff if they're still available and things like that. And then once that happens, then they wait for a miracle to happen. To become a saint in heaven, you need two miracles. So 
when you pray, what does that mean? When you pray for the intercession of a saint, like say, Saint the Blessed Virgin Mary, you're praying to her and you're asking her for your, for your help, for her help, and then, you know, and then she grants that. That would be considered a miracle. So after you get the first miracle, like with Saint John Paul II, the miracle that was attributed to him, there was a, a sister that was dying of Parkinson's, which is actually what he had as, by, as well. And then she miraculously, they prayed to St. John Paul II, they miraculously healed and she was cured. And that was declared one of the miracles. So you get that first miracle and then they pray for another miracle to happen. And then once that miracle happens, then they're canonized in the church by, by the Pope. You know, so the saints, you know, have granted, you know, through the, through the power of God, you know, they, God allows them or the Lord gives the saints to us to intercede, to help us in our, in our life. You can go to different shrines of saints today and you'll see like crutches or, you know, armbands or casts or eye patches. People, after they pray to that saint and they're cured, they put those things there to remind them of the intercession of the saints. So we give glory to God for the saints. That's what each one of us, you know, is, is called to do, to live a holy life with love of God. So let us be inspired by their lives. We now come before the Lord with humble hearts, trusting him with our needs. For the people of God, may the Spirit of Christ bring unity and peace to every heart in relationship. We pray to the Lord. For the world, may God help guide our priorities in protecting and serving one another, especially those most vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. For those who suffer from mental illness or emotional distress, and for all who love and care for them, we pray to the Lord. We pray for an end to the pandemic. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may Jesus welcome them into the kingdom with open arms. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers we bring before you today. We make them through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we, that we offer you. Through the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Wash me, O Lord, from iniquity. Open, ten. Hey, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the virgin blessed rose, do we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord God, Almighty Father, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the height. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the height. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of God. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Roger, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Renewed by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the example of the blessed Rose Dushner, bearing in our body the death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of the soul. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, born and unborn.